In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a strategy for adding nested or persistent layouts in a Next.js application. I first learned this pattern from Adam in his blog titled Persistent Layout Patterns in Next.js, where he does a really good job of showing four different patterns for how you can add nested or persistent layouts in a Next.js application. I'm going to be taking the third option and tweaking a little bit, but mostly just showing how you can convert an application into this kind of pattern. So here we have a very simple application. It's got a home page with this green uh, app bar and then a little green border. And if you go to the about page, it's very similar. You have the green border in the main pane, and then you have the app bar is the exact same. If you go to the team page, you still have the app bar. That green border goes away. Now you have this sidebar and this kind of main pane. If you click on one of these team members or cats, it will load their picture and their title, and you have the sidebar still. You may have noticed that if you go from the team to a specific cat, the sidebar will refresh the data, which is not great. Uh, and maybe you can do that, but it would be nice if it just persisted since the, the same data. If we go in between specific cats, we're on the same you know page in, in the way that Next thinks about it. So we actually maintain the same uh, app bar, or, or sorry, sidebar, but on the actual team page, it has to reload it. So we're going to see how we can extract those components uh, into their own component so that we're, we can share them across them in kind of a good, easy pattern. So first thing to do, let's go to the, the uh, pages slash index, which is our home page. We're also going to open the about page. So we have both of these and we can see that there's this main with this class name. We're using Tailwind for the styling and these are the exact same. So the first thing to do is to go ahead and extract these out. So we're going to copy that and we need to make a new file and we'll call it layout slash, we'll just call it index.tsx for now. So we're going to export a function called index layout. And we're going to return what we just copied. It automatically closed the main for us and we're going to pass along the children. We're using TypeScript, so we need to go ahead and define the children. React.react .react node is the way I like to do that. So now we have this layout that should be the same and we could go ahead and add it here. So let's call that right there, auto import it, change the closing tag. And then we can see our home page. it's the exact same. And we could add this to the about page, but really we want to handle this in a little bit different way just to demonstrate the pattern that we're going to be applying. So if we go into the underscore app.tsx page, if you're not familiar with this, what this is is basically this is the only component that will be the same across all pages. Essentially, it will render on every single page and it's how you can you can handle client side, uh, kind of animations and, and things like that. There's a lot you can do in it, and it's a, it's a very important component, so I definitely encourage you looking into it if you're not familiar with it in your Next.js applications. You can see here we have the nav bar. That is the one piece of the layout that actually does stay consistent across all the pages. So we went ahead and just added that in the underscore app.tsx file. We could add the index layout that we just created, um, but the problem is we'd have to tell it when to appear and when to disappear based on the route that we're on, and I'd rather have the pages themselves determine what their layout is supposed to be. So we're going to take Adam's pattern that he has and I'm going to kind of write my own version of it. And it may be a little confusing at first, but just bear with me as I try to explain what's going on. So the first thing is we have these app props, but I'm actually going to change what this is because there's a new thing that's going to be added. This component is any component page that's coming in. Um, and that's what we're going to be kind of tweaking. So let me go ahead and just implement a type that we're going to need. We're going to call it component with page layout. And we're going to say app props. And we're going to add the component. We're going to change it to the app props component. And with that, we're also going to change this to be page layout. This is the, the new thing that we're adding. We're adding something called page layout. And it's an optional argument. And it is going to be a react.component type. So what does this mean? Basically, this means that any component that we have, any component that's coming in, we'll be able to optionally pull off something called a page layout. And that itself is going to be a component. And we'll show how we can implement this. But for now, we're just going to finish setting this up. So here, we pass along the page props. And the component itself, we just render this straight up. This is, again, every single page in our Next.js application is represented by this component. So we're going to add component dot, oops. Ah, of course, we need to change this so that it knows what we're talking about. Here we go, page layout. So we're going to check, is there a page layout? If there's not, we're just, we're just going to return what we already had because so we don't need to do anything fancy. But if we do have a page layout, what we're going to do is we're going to take that component dot page layout. 
and then we're going to render our component inside of that. So now we're, we're pretty much saying, hey, we can add a page layout component to any component and render the component inside of it. This probably will make more sense if we actually go ahead and implement it. So let's go back to the home page. And here we have that index layout. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to take home. And inside of home, since home is just a function in JavaScript, you can add whatever you want to it. We're going to add something called page layout. That's exactly what we had over here. Let me close the sidebar so we have a little bit more room. There we go. So we can add this page layout, and we're going to call it index layout. And here, if we refresh, we'll actually see that there is a border around the border. So we want to get rid of that inner one. And there we go. We have exactly what we want. So let's follow that again. Let's see what we're doing. So we're taking the index layout that came from layout. We're passing it along to the component home just as a property, because a function in JavaScript is really it's just an object. You can add whatever you want. So we're adding that there. And then in underscore app, we're saying, hey, all of the components that are coming in, they're like the regular components, but they may additionally have this page layout property. And if it does, have, in fact, have that page layout property, well, we know that's a component type from React. So we can just render it as a component. And then let's render the component inside of this. So that's exactly what we have here. And let's do the exact same thing on our, our about page. So of course, this should be called about, not home. And we do need to import this. Perfect. And then let's delete this, because that's just duplicated code at this point. And if we go to the about page, it's the exact same, which is exactly what we want. I do like to export this below, just to make it a little bit more clear. And if I remove that, you'll see that this really did work. I'm not, I'm not necessarily doing anything. You do have to refresh occasionally, just because uh, Next.js doesn't always, the fast refresh doesn't always understand this pattern, which is a bit of a bummer, but hey, that's how it is. So there you go. We have the exact layout between these two. Now, this may be a little bit overkill for this example. Like That really wasn't that much code that we deleted, and uh, we really could have just imported the layout, and things might have been easy. But I think where it really shines is when we look at the team page, because we do have those issues that we pointed out before. Another little issue we want to point out um, that's going to be a little bit more clear as we resolve this is you lose your scroll position to when you switch between these pages, and that's really not good. Even if that data was the same, uh, that likely that that scroll position would have changed. Whereas here, it does not change because in Next.js, this is the same page. This is literally the exact same component. It knows exactly where it is in scroll position. So anyway, let's get back. And we can go ahead and close a couple of these. And let's open the team page. So we've got, uh, that's the API. So we need to do pages slash team slash index. There we go. So this is the root page, and we've got this aside, which is the sidebar. And that's really the thing that we want to extract out. Uh, we can also extract out the main because there's some styling that's the same on it. So really all this page needs to render is this selected team member to get started. Uh, it's as simple as that. So let's go ahead and open up our sidebar again, and we're going to add some another layout. And we're going to call this team.tsx. And to get started, I'm just going to pull everything out here, and I'm going to start renaming some things. So we'll call this team layout, first of all. I'm not going to make this a default. And the other things I need to get rid of is I don't need that head. I, the head is going to be different in each of these, so I can delete that. Um, of course, this part is what we said is going to be the children. And then again, let's add our TypeScript. So children, children, react.react .react node. There we go. We don't need this anymore. Um, all our imports have kind of gotten messed up, so we're probably we're just going to go ahead and delete these. And try this again. Use fetch team app bar height and spinner. Great. So we have the layout that we want. It all looks good. So let's go ahead and import it and add it. And here we can really delete everything except that h1 because we said that's the only thing that's going to stay the same. So OK, great. We saw our sidebar left. So we'll know for sure when we add it correctly. Again, let's take this export default team and put it down here. And in between them, let's add the team dot page layout equals team layout. And there we go. We can see our sidebar. It's taking a little bit to load, but there it goes. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Now, when we go to the individual team member page, we're going to see that we actually are going to need access to which team member we're on, because here we map over the team. We try and find it by the ID. So we do need access to this data. And this is where, so far, what we have would fall apart, because before we were fetching the data every time, and we really do need that data. 
Now we're fetching the data in the team layout. And the easiest way to make sure that we have access to it is to add a context. So if you're not familiar with context in React, uh, they're pretty simple. It's just a way to add data basically to a specific um, part of your tree. And then anything in any ancestor, any child of that tree rather, can reach in and, and get the context out from that context provider. So that's probably pretty confusing uh, just kind of in, in those terms. So let me just show how it works. And I think that's a lot more clear. So we're going to create a context. And we're going to call this team context. And all we need to use is create context, which comes from React. We can delete that React import. We don't need that anymore. And here, we're going to type this out and figure out some things in a second. But first thing that we want to do is we want to wrap all this in the provider. So the team context, it comes with a provider, a consumer, uh, and a display name. But right now, all we're using is the provider. This is what's going to actually provide the values that we need. So we have the provider, and now it needs a value. And we're actually just going to pass along what came back from use fetch team, because that's what we're going to want. Great. And so here we want to say that the type, uh, first we can say, you know, it's potentially null and that's probably what it will start out as. And there's a reason we want to do that. I'll explain it in a second. And the other thing we can do is we can do return type, type of use fetch team. And so basically that's just saying, hey, whatever use fetch team is going to return, that's what we want. That's what this is because um, we're just passing it along. So pretty easy. So the other thing from here that we want is we actually want to be able to get these values out. And so the way that you can get a value out of a context provider is by using a hook called use context. So we're going to create our own custom hook called uh, use team. And with that, oops, we're going to uh, assign team to use context of the team context. So we take that exact same object that we had, we use use context which will pull out the value. So as long as this use team is called in a component that is a child of this team layout, or more specifically, this team context provider, then it will give us a team value. This team value, though, can be null. Um, so we need to account for that. The null case basically means, hey, we called this incorrectly. So we're going to say if team equals equals nulls, null, then we're going to throw a new error. And we're just going to say that use team must be called in a child of team layout. And then we'll return team. And at this point, we know team is not going to be null, which is great. It's exactly what we wanted. So now with the ID, we can go ahead and add the team member page layout. So passing it along just like we did before. It's a little bit of boilerplate, but you know it's just that one line. Not too bad, I guess, do if you count the import. And we can pretty much get rid of everything in here. So we want to get rid of all of that and all of that. So we still have the status, we still have the team, but instead of use fetch team, we want to use use team. Oh, I think we forgot, or I forgot to export this. There we go. Hmm, still doesn't seem happy. So let's see, team layout, use team, there it is. The imports just hadn't caught up to me. All right, so we'll still have the status, we'll still have the team. Everything else should be exactly how we want it. We're going to give this a refresh just to make sure everything is still working. So we have that data loading, but as soon as we click on one, we can see that the data didn't have to reload. Uh, we lost a little bit of something here, so I need to, I need to go back just a, two, a few steps because there is some uh, highlighting that we lost. And we really want to grab that, so there it is just to make things a little bit nicer. So back over here. All right, I believe it was on each of these. We're going to change that out here. Um, this author ID, that needs to come from the router. So let's pull that out. Cool, so we're using use router, which comes from Next.js. From the query, we're saying, hey, if there's an author ID, we're actually going to use that and we're going to see is the ID the same. If it is, we're going to change some of the styling so that we get a nice little um, highlight on who we're actually on. Let's give this a refresh. And so we can go back to the main team page. We can actually scroll down. We're going to hit Puss in Boots and our scroll position is saved and we didn't have to refresh the data, which is nice. So this is why a persistent or nested layout is uh, really desirable in situations like these where you have these kind of complex, you know, nested um, different pages and whatnot. So this is how I found best to do this in a Next.js application. There's a little bit of wire up. You kind of have to understand mostly this little piece. But once you have this in place and once you set it up this way, it's pretty easy to follow. 
uh, the pattern and really it's just assigning this page layout here. That's all you have to do to, to get that nested layout. Other frameworks like Next.js make this really easy to do. Uh, they have the outlet uh, tag, and if you haven't, sorry, not Next.js, Remix, <laughs> Remix Run. Um, if you go to their website, you can see how they do nested layouts. Basically, they have an outlet which comes from React Router, and it's a really easy way to say, hey, this is where I want the child uh, page layout stuff to render inside of the parent page layout. Um, so I do wish Next had a little bit more of a built-in way to do this, but regardless, this is the best way I figured out how to do it, and I hope this helps you if you need to make any 